Hi guys, it's your girl Lola Loves You. In today's topic, we're going to talk about the real issue between Phyllis Hyman and Whitney Houston. Well, <laughs> it really wasn't a true issue between both ladies. They were both, uh, what I want to say, casualties of war, meaning that Clive Davis was the common denominator. Um, Whitney just got caught up in Clive Davis and Phyllis Hyman, uh, you know, issues. Um, well, let me, let's do the background story behind this. Okay. Clive Davis signed Phyllis Hyman back in the day, way before Whitney Houston. And he, everybody know Clive Davis wanted this protege pop diva. And he really wanted an African-American pop diva. So um, he just was kept searching. So all the ladies that he was signing back then were more established women like Dionne Woolwich. She already had her own, you know, image, her own style of music. Aretha Franklin, the same thing. And Phyllis Hyman. Phyllis Hyman was already uh, a singer, you know, already had record deals and she knew the business. Now, Phyllis Hyman is, uh, she was a grown woman at that time and she, she knew the business and she was... In, intelligent and art, very articulate gorgeous woman and she was one of those people her sister said on an unsung episode that she didn't play along to get along she spoke her mind very opinionated and her zodiac sign was a cancer so and that's my zodiac sign so we have a bad habit at times we don't know how to um bite, bite our tongues you know not to shut our mouths you know and sometimes that can hurt us, you know, because we, we're very truthful people. So, um, with uh, Clive Davis, I feel as though he wanted this pop diva and the music that he had for Phyllis, she didn't like it. And she would tell him she didn't like it. You know, she wasn't this young 18-year-old, 19-year-old girl. She was a grown woman that was already married. You understand what I'm saying? So, and she already had a recording contract. So, she was very resistant. You know, he wanted her to play in arenas where she was fine at nightclubs. You understand what I'm saying? She liked it, sappy, sad songs. He wanted her to do more pop songs. And, you know, they just clashed. Um, I remember... I. I believe he didn't want her to do sophisticated ladies and she did the uh she did the play and was nominated for a Tony. She didn't win. And she was also doing uh posing nude for various uh, magazines like OI is O U I and other magazines. Um she uh, I think it was another one was Players. Um she posed nude. She was naked from head to toe. And you know things like that and when you trying to be the image Clive Davis wanted for his pop diva, that was not it. So she was very resistant towards Clive Davis. And I don't know if it was out of fear or just lack of knowledge, or she just didn't like Clive Davis as a person. I would, We would never know. But um, I feel as though that after, you know, time went on that, you know, her contract was going to be up. And so once her contract was up, Clive Davis, his sights, his sights was already on others, and especially Whitney Houston. So I feel as though after he knew that her contract was going to be up, then that's when he got Whitney Houston. That's when he, you know, signed Whitney Houston and got his young pop diva. Now, during the time after, you know, Phyllis left Clive Davis, her career still propelled in even higher heights with her um, single, Don't Want to Change the World. And that was like a number one single for her. But she was still, you know, in the urban sector of the music business. And I feel as though as time went on and, you know, sometimes you got to sit back and say, you know, I didn't do, I didn't make the right decisions. Oh, I should have listened. Because Phyllis Hyman was one of those, those artists that never got that, that true credit of her talent, her beauty. And in my opinion, when you do listen to Phyllis Hyman music, a lot of it is very sappy very sad and very lonely and it's like everybody don't want to hear that you understand what i'm saying yeah you can have one or two songs like that but if that's your brand people don't want to hear that are you going to be a nightclub singer that people that's 
under the influence of alcohol to want to listen to that. You know, everybody at that time in the 80s and 90s, no one want to hear that, those type of songs. So I believe, in my opinion, Phyllis should have listened to Clive Davis in the business aspect. Now, as when Phyllis Hyman back then, especially signed with um, Arista Records with, under Clive Davis, she would go on seminars telling young artists about the secrets of the music business and things you should know and should not know. Now, you know that is a no-no. So that could got her blackballed. That could have gotten her, you know, a lot of people don't like her, especially if Clive Davis, you know, if that if she was exposing him in, his, in the business aspect, people don't want a young artist to know the ins and outs of the music, the true blueprint of music. They don't want the artists to know that. So she was telling people and, you know, these young artists and these young people to want to, you know, become celebrities. She was letting them know how the business was. Now, um, I believe after she left Clive Davis and she had such of a bad taste in her mouth um, of Clive Davis, I believe Whitney Houston, you know, I'm saying Clive Davis. Now he got his, you know, his protege, this uh, iconic pop diva. He got the, the diva he always wanted. And Phyllis probably kind of felt a little bitter and slighted. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you know, why you ain't do that with me? But she couldn't get really no mad at no one but herself because he was trying to do those things he did with Whitney Houston with her. But Phyllis was very resistant. And that, I guess it was a learning lesson for Phyllis. I Hopefully she learned her lesson about, you know, if she would have just listened, maybe she would have been on a Whitney Houston level because she's very talented and very beautiful woman. Now, um, as Whitney, you know, get, getting signed, um, you know, she probably, even if she did was a Phyllis Hyman fan, you know, out of Clive Davis, you know, she can't, you know, give Phyllis, you know, praises or say she liked Phyllis Hyman because of Clive Davis. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to bite the hand that feeds you. So will Phyllis, I mean, Whitney Houston was that type of person. She didn't like conflict. So she never said nothing of Phyllis Hyman. But I don't know, really, they had true beef. But people don't know in Robin's book, Phyllis Hyman used to go see Whitney Houston at Sweetwaters and would come backstage and let Whitney Houston know how good she was. People don't know that, that Phyllis knew this young Whitney Houston was. So was there a real beef or not? But like I said, at the common denominator was Clive Davis and will always be Clive Davis, whatever riff, if it was a riff between Phyllis Hyman and Whitney Houston. Now, Clive Davis, he wanted this pop diva. Like I said, he couldn't do it with um, Dion because Dion was already a, a diva. You understand? She was already an icon, iconic legend. Um, Aretha Franklin, same thing. And now Phyllis Hyman was just a grown woman that was no nonsense. You understand what I'm saying? You can't make her do anything she don't want to do. Like um, people don't know when Phyllis was recording um, You Know How to Love Me, they kept wanting her to, to keep um, doing a certain part over and over because Clive Davis is a perfectionist. And they said she did it one more, she did like a couple of times. And one more time she threw her headphones and she said, you you take it or not. And she was that type of woman. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you couldn't walk over Phyllis Hyman. And with Whitney Houston, this is a sweet, young, innocent girl 18, 19, and she, you know what I'm saying, she really wants this. So she really don't know the business, the inside of the business. All she want to sing. And Clive Dave, Davis is giving her such a great platform, so she's listening. So every little thing she doing that Clive Davis is telling her is paying off. Every little thing. Every, Clive Davis was a genius with Whitney Houston. And I'm hands down, you got to give it to the man. He was a genius in packaging her, branding her, and just everything. And that's why Whitney Houston is the best diva of all times. Because he had it down, pack how she looked, how she sound, how she presented herself, how she did interviews, how everything, you just love Whitney Houston. It was like, she could do no wrong. And Phyllis Hyman, she's one of those type of people, she couldn't do that. She had to be herself. She wanted to do what she wanted to do. And that's another video we want to talk about because I want to do comparisons between Whitney and Mickey Howard. Mickey Howard, another, in my opinion, did the same thing that Phyllis Hyman did. You being resistant to what people is trying to show you success. And a lot of artists come, I understand you know yourself and you know you get into this business, but people don't understand it's politics to this thing. 
You understand what I'm saying? You might have to be around a person that you don't like. You might have to do an album or a song with some producers that you don't like or never heard of. And you have to do it because it's politics. Those people that are selling those records know what they're doing. They know what the world want to hear and what what's hot now, what's trending now, and what's not. Or what which really is true talent and not talent. A lot of singers that we have seen that could sing their tails off, that really could sing. They and you're like, why did they, they never have a one number one hit or a Grammy or this or that? Because they did not listen to the politics. That's all it boils down to is politics and listening. And sometimes you got to compromise because sometimes an artist really can know something and have uh, some hot music or, you know, produce something very hot. And the, the record label might not find out, you know, or the whoever in charge of it might not think it's a hit. But if they do some type of compromise and then they find out it's a hit sometimes. But like I said, the, it really wasn't no real beef between Whitney and Phyllis. Phyllis knew young Whitney Houston at Sweetwater's. Um, I never saw Whitney talk about Phyllis Hyman. Um, I do remember Phyllis Hyman is, was cool with a lot of people in the music industry. She was cool with Asher, Ashford and Center, and they had a restaurant in New York. And one time, Sissy Houston was there, and it was a video that was Sissy and Phyllis Hyman singing together, and there was no beef. So, you know, Hollywood take little things and always want to put divas against each other. But I don't think it was really a real beef. I just really think that Phyllis Hyman didn't um but didn't, didn't like Clive Davis and you know anything associated with him so I really don't think she personally had an issue with Whitney Houston and I don't think Whitney Houston personally had an issue with Phil Thomas she just ain't acknowledged it she just ignored the whole situation but leave in the comments down below what your thoughts are about the topic is um do you agree with me or do you think it was really some type of beef I don't think it was really no type of real beef like I said I think the common denominator was Clive Davis Anyway, it's your girl Lola loves you. I love my honey buns. I'll be back with another video. Bye.